let's take a look at the difference between color grading something in Resolve 18 versus Premiere 2022. Here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro. We have a pretty simple project here. It's some footage shot in S-Log 3 of some hot air balloons and some friends just having a great time. Ah, oh, so wholesome. How would we go about color grading this in Premiere using the Lumetri panel? Well, since we know that this is shot in S-Log 3, a good thing to do would be to use some kind of color transform to turn this S-Log 3 into Rec. 709, to make this S-Log 3 normalized and look good on a monitor. Because right now it looks all gray and nasty. And we wanna do this to all of our clips. So first thing I'm gonna do is make an adjustment layer so that I can put the same look over everything. I'll right click here on my project panel, new item, adjustment layer, I'll hit okay. And now I'll drag this up above everything and put this adjustment layer over any clip that I want to affect. Next, we can select the adjustment layer and in our Lumetri controls, we can make one adjustment here that will be applied to our whole project. I'll go ahead and open the creative tab here and under look, I'll load a custom LUT and I'm gonna load a LUT that we make here at ground control our GCS log three to rec 709 cube and hit open. What this does is normalize footage shot in S log three and it makes it look pretty good out of the box. Assuming the exposure and everything is good in the footage. And so we have a pretty good starting point here. Looks pretty nice. But if we want to adjust each of these clips separately, we can deselect our adjustment layer and move our playhead over the first shot. And that should select that automatically if we're in the color presets. If not, you can go up to sequence and select selection follows playhead. Make sure that's checked. And now we can adjust this clip with that transform LUT over it. And I'll just go to our basic correction tab here and we can adjust exposure, saturation, white balance, whatever we want. Maybe I'll bump the exposure just a little bit, punch the contrast just a touch, and maybe we'll warm it up a little. Maybe punch a little more saturation. And now this first shot looks pretty nice. If we want to copy the grade from this first shot, I can select this first shot and hit Control C on the keyboard. And on the second shot, hit Control Alt V, and that will bring up our paste attributes panel here. And I'm just going to deselect everything except for Lumetri color and hit OK. And that'll do the same treatment on this shot as we had on the first shot. So now that looks pretty good. Maybe we want to do something similar for this next shot. I'll hit Control Alt V again. Hit OK, and it looks pretty good. This shot is a little bit dark, so I can take this exposure and boost that up a little bit. Now we have a nicer looking shot. Maybe we'll take it away from pink just a touch and maybe a little bit warmer. Fifth shot, we're gonna do probably a similar thing. I'll select that shot before it, hit Control C, and select the shot I'm copying this to, and hit Control Alt V, and we'll paste the Lumetri, and that looks pretty good. Next shot, ooh, this looks pretty nice as it is. Let's see if it matches with the other ones. Yeah, that looks nice. Maybe just warm it up a touch. There we go. This shot again looks pretty nice. Warm it up just a touch. This one might be just a little too warm. So I'll push it away from warm. Also might take the exposure down just a bit. Maybe take the highlights down a little bit. And the exposure up. That looks pretty nice. And then this final shot, I think we'll take the exposure down a little. And now we have a pretty nice looking project, we color graded all in Lumetri and it works pretty well. So that's how I would color grade something in Lumetri. Now let's say I wanna do something like add a vignette to this shot, maybe to darken the rest of it, but keep her bright. I can go to Lumetri here and open vignette and I can push down the amount and we'll just push that way down, way more than we would, just the roundness here. And I can keep this sort of tasteful and we can darken the edges a little bit. Let's say maybe I wanna take this sky down a little bit I can grab the curves and maybe boost up the midtones and bring the highlights down just a touch. Now we can start to control that sky a little more. Maybe get a little bit more detail, take those highlights down and boost the shadows up, boost the contrast a little bit, play with our curves a little, get maybe a little better result. If I wanna make this sky a little bit more blue, I can go to curves and I can take the hue versus saturation curve and just drag on the sky and I can push the saturation of the sky up a little bit Add a little more blue in that sky. Here's before and here's after. It does a little bit of work there on the sky. Now things are looking beautimous. And so we can adjust a little bit of details, selecting things by color, do a little bit of work in the shadows and highlights, kind of level things out a little more. So we have quite a few really good tools here in Lumetri. What if I wanted to do something like adjust this balloon separate from this balloon and maybe change its color? for whatever reason. I could duplicate my Lumetri color here. I'll hit Control C and Control V, and I'll reset the second Lumetri color. And here under my curves, 
I can do something like grab this yellow and I can shift it on my hue versus hue curve. Maybe we'll make this kind of a green. And then I can limit this Lumetri by going here to my effects and I can create a mask. And then that adjustment is only gonna happen within this mask. So now I have one green balloon and one yellow balloon. Let's see how this plays back. The green balloon, yellow balloon. That works well, except for the fire there. But we'll just ignore that for this video. It's green fire, let's say. That's how you would do something like a color change for just one part of the clip. So that's pretty much the process that I would recommend in Lumetri. If you have log footage that you put some kind of adjustment layer over everything with a color transform LUT, we do have several of those available at groundcontrol.film for free. And then under that adjustment layer, select the individual clips and adjust their exposure and anything that you want to change under that transform LUT. One thing I'll say about Lumetri is that this process is actually pretty nice and you can do a good color grade this way. Something that tends to get problematic in my experience is getting a little bit more detailed. For instance, on this shot, I'll just reset our grade. Let's say I want to keep everything pretty much dark, but I want to brighten up her face a little bit. I can do this trick where I duplicate this Lumetri and reset it, and I can make an adjustment kind of looking at her skin here, a little bit of contrast out, warm it up a little bit. But if I want to just have it be on her face and her skin, I could do something like create an ellipse mask, and I could put this kind of in the middle of our shot and feather it out a little bit and we can do some pretty good work there. But if I wanted to limit it just to her face, for whatever reason, I could select that and then track this mask forward and backward. I could do that and that works good. Let's say I wanna darken just this side of the clip. I'll rename this face, put a new Lumetri color on here. I'll rename this edge and reset it. Now maybe I'll take the exposure down a little bit and we're just gonna darken this side and we'll just draw this edge here and it's having a hard time. This is certainly, at least on my system, which is a pretty good system, it's having a little bit of a hard time here. Um, very, very laggy, and it's, it's painful, painful to do this. And we'll feather this out. We can darken the side here. Probably don't need to track it and play this back and that looks pretty nice. We could do that. Let's say we want to adjust our sky a little bit. I can go into HSL secondaries. I can grab just the brighter parts of our footage here, like just the sky, and I can darken it. Maybe we'll turn a little more blue and let's limit it to just the top of our shot here. I'll just make a big circle. We could add a big soft mask here and now we can darken that sky like that with the secondary. So there's quite a bit of tools that you can use inside of the Lumetri panel in Premiere, and it works pretty well. Let's take a look at doing a similar process in Resolve. So here I am in Resolve in the edit page. When I want to go into color, I just go to the color page like this. And now whatever clip I select here shows up in the viewer and I can adjust it with the tools down here. I'm gonna go ahead and close our mini timeline here. And the first thing we gotta do is set up a color transform, which I could also do with a LUT, but Resolve has some really high quality color management. So I can switch over here to our timeline nodes like this. Now I'll hit Alt S to add a new node. And with that selected, I'll go to our effects and go down to color space transform. I'll throw that on there. Input color space, we're gonna go with S gamut three cine, S log three. Output color space, rec 709. I'll turn off our tone mapping, turn our gamut mapping to saturation compression, and I'll close our effects and switch back over to our normal nodes. And now everything has that color transform on it. And that gives us a good starting point. We could use this the same way and just load a LUT on this node. Kind of works the same way, but we'll use a color transform. Now I can go through each clip and adjust the exposure just by changing this offset wheel right here. And I wanna get things pretty dialed in as far as exposure. First off, there we have our exposure adjusted on most of our clips here. That LUT has a little bit of built-in contrast. So because we're using a color transform, we don't have that added contrast. I'll add just a little curve, maybe a little bit of saturation. See how that looks on everything. That definitely brings us closer to where we wanna be. Looks nice. Okay, and now let's do a similar thing here. Maybe we want to warm things up using the temperature slider. 
push this temperature just a little bit warm, maybe add a little saturation to this clip. And if I wanna do a similar thing to this clip, I could just middle button mouse click, that's click down on my scroll wheel of my mouse on whatever I wanna copy from with the clip that I wanna to copy to select it. So I can just middle button mouse click here. That'll bring that same look, kind of do the same thing here. So I can copy the look from this first shot onto the second shot. It's a little dark, maybe we wanna push it up a little bit. This shot's probably a little bit contrasty, so I can take the gain down a touch, push the gamma up a little bit, push the lift up a little bit, just to take that contrast down a little. There, we're looking a little bit nicer. And we have this shot, maybe we'll add a little saturation to that too, maybe take the gamma down a touch. And now we have everything pretty roughed in as far as looking nice. And now if we wanna do kind of the same thing, like change this balloon to green, I can make a new node by hitting Alt S, I can select this with a window like that, and I can grab a curve, like hue versus hue, and I can change this to green. There we go. And maybe I'll even deal with this fire real quick. I'll make a layer node, which just takes that same input image and it puts it over our current color grade. And I'm gonna add a qualifier here, turn off hue and saturation. And I'm just gonna keep the brightest parts. So I get rid of that background, but I keep the fire, something like that. And now I can limit this with a window and put this orange fire back over. And I'll track it real quick by hitting Control T and Alt T to track backwards. So now we have the green balloon with the orange fire and it works great. Let's go back to this shot and do our adjustment on her right here. So I'll select just her face. Let's say I wanna brighten that up a little bit, maybe with a curve and maybe warm it up a touch, something like that, just to bring a little bit of light on her face. Works fine without it tracked but I can go to the tracker and track this back and forth and it'll track that. Then I can select the side here. I'll just hit Alt P for a parallel node and I'll select the side like this and feather it out and bring that side down a little bit. Just move this over and we'll track it backwards just so it sticks. That looks good. And let's say we want to adjust this sky. I'll make a new node here. This time I'll go to our log wheels like this and I can take just the highlights down. That's going to take our sky down a little bit. I'll take our gain down just a touch so that we have this detail back in our sky like this. I can limit it to the brighter parts of the shot using our qualifier here. And now I'll add a gradient here to the sky and we'll just push that down as much as we want so we can adjust that sky separately if we want to. And go through and adjust the blues on this sky using our color warper. I can select the blues and kind of turn those maybe a little bit more teal, maybe saturate them a little more just using that, whatever we wanna do for all of our shots. The sky might be a little bit crazy. So I can take the strength of just this sky adjustment down with this key output gain right here in the key palette, grab this gain and push it down and I can kind of adjust how strong I want that to be. Let's say maybe I don't like this rainbow reflection on her phone here. I can select that really easily using a window and I'll track this back and forth with the tracker and it'll do a pretty good job. Adjust this a little bit, track this backwards. There we go. Make sure we have a good selection here. We could just desaturate that screen if we wanted to. There it's a little less distracting. We can even go in and do stuff like select just the skin tones and soften out this skin a little bit and just take down the mid-tone detail, which will add a little bit of softness to her skin, which we could limit with a window just on her face and track this back and forth and soften out those skin tones quite a bit. So really the difference here is Resolve, you can get super detailed. As far as working in Lumetri, when it comes to taking an image and going from kind of this gray washed out image to something that looks nice, you can definitely do that. But if you want to get more detailed and get a little bit more picky about your shots, Resolve is the way to go. In the same amount of time, you can just get way more detailed. So there's a little look at the uh, differences between color grading something in Lumetri versus Resolve. I personally like Resolve because you can get so detailed with your color grades and adjust every single little part of the shot if you want to. But on top of that, it's free. You don't have to pay a subscription. You can either use the free version or if you need a few more advanced features, you can get the studio version for $2.95. Pretty awesome. Everything that we did in Resolve in this video is available in the free version. So download it, check it out. If you do want to learn the ins and outs of color grading in DaVinci Resolve, we have a course available, Pro Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve. It's available now at groundcontrol.film. Hey, thanks for hanging with me. Tell me what's your favorite feature of Premiere 
And what's your favorite feature of Resolve? Have you used both? Do you only use one? Why or why not? Tell me.